ITC operates, builds, and maintains the electric transmission infrastructure. We are working hard to improve electric reliability and increase electric transmission capacity throughout our operations across the Midwest. ITC, we're your energy superhighway. The future of our economy, our education, and our country is in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Careers related to STEM are predicted to grow to more than 9 million by 2022. Despite that expected growth, only 25% of STEM positions are currently occupied by women who make up half of our workforce. The gender gap and in interest in STEM begins to appear early in middle school, even at a time when our young girls are outperforming boys in math and science. So, it's the perfect age for education and career experts to begin to encourage and demonstrate to our female students the possibilities of STEM careers. Hello, and welcome to STEM Heroes. I'm your host, Dr. Tanya Matthews from the Michigan Science Center. In order to show young girls the power and impact of STEM education, we'll feature women who found a love for STEM early in their lives and followed that passion all the way through to successful careers. And these stories are cool enough, I think will inspire our boys too. First up is Mary Barra, whose interest in engineering propelled her into becoming the first female leader of a major global automaker as CEO and chairman of the General Motors Company. We sat down with her and she discussed her road to the top and how the company needs more students to pursue an engineering degree. If we expect our industry to thrive well into the future, we have to provide solutions. I'm confident no matter what you want to do, having a strong science and math background and understanding technology is going to better prepare you to work in that area that you love, and once you love it, that can mean every day is fun. Even in the early years of my schooling, I always just thought math was fun. It's probably part of my personality, but I think it's neat when you get a bunch of inputs or conditions, and then you have to figure out what the best answer is. It's kind of like it's solving a puzzle. And so when my parents realized that, they both really encouraged me to push myself and see what I could do. Fortunately, I went to General Motors Institute, which is now Kettering University, and we had a co-op program. So I got to work and see what engineers did, and then go back to school and know that that's what I wanted to study. And so that's really what helped me. Engineers do so many things. I worked in the areas where we design vehicles. I worked in the area where we did engineering and validation. I worked in the area where we you know, actually assembled the vehicles. In all of those areas, there were engineers doing many different things. And so I realized if I had an engineering degree, and I'm specifically uh, an electrical engineer, that I could work across a wide array of things. And I, and I loved all of them. And that's when I also learned I love the car business. One of the really interesting things that I learned in this role that surprised me is when people would come up to me and say, hey, because you're in this role, it has convinced my daughter or my sister or someone that they know that they see somebody in the role that they believe they can do it too, and therefore they're following a STEM background. And that to me is the most rewarding, that simply because when people see people like them, they believe they can do it too, and I believe they can as well. General Motors, we are big believers in education because we think that is such an important component for every child. And so we do a lot of work. We do work with FIRST Robotics. We do work with World in Motion. And I've even had the opportunity to go spend time with a third, fourth grader. And you know, when I ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? No matter what they say, it's got a connection to STEM. Because if you look at industry today, there's not an industry that isn't being impacted or disrupted or transformed by technology. 
One of the things that's great about World in Motion is, and, and FIRST Robotics as well, is they get to actually make something. So it's not just people talking at them or reading about it. They get to make something, they get to see how it works, they get to change it. And so, you know, they're really understanding the, the foundational principles of physics or many other aspects of engineering. So I think when they actually get to do something and then they get to make changes and see how they make things better, that's exciting. And that's where I see them, you know, get really excited. And, and also the little competitions help as well. The teenagers, the boys and girls, or the young adults that are either in K through 12 or in going to college right now, they are our future. They will be the people that come in and help us uh, really redefine transportation. In the world of transportation, we believe we will see more change in the next five years than we've seen in the last 50. And so it's vitally important uh, that we have people who can help us create that, that new world and, and that new transformation. The whole way people get from point A to point B is being uh, transformed or disrupted. And technology is a key piece of all that. Whether you talk about electric vehicles or increased connectivity or autonomous driving, all of which require very strong STEM backgrounds to really create the future. So it is an extremely exciting time to be at General Motors right now, and we're always looking for great engineers to join the company, and so it will fuel our success. Right now, for some of the technologies we're putting out, engineers have dreamed up a vision that they want to create, and then actually gone in and done the engineering to create an actual physical property that does that. A great example of that is the Bolt, or the fact that we have 4G LTE in our vehicles and have connectivity. The fact that you can use your smartphone and beep the horn or unlock your vehicle or start it. Those are all things that somebody said, hmm, I wonder if I can do this. And then they use their education and their, their degree to make it happen. So clearly, if you're sitting in high school today thinking about what you're going to do, an engineering career or a science, math, a computer science, those are all great fields that uh, we're going to desperately need and will provide exciting careers for in the future. Cancer touches many lives, and cancer treatment research is just another way a career in STEM makes a difference by researching the ways to conquer this deadly disease. Assistant research scientist at the University of Michigan, Katherine Luker, is doing just that, while she's also mentoring future young scientists to do the same in the Luker Lab. I think it's important for any person to be able to follow their passion and do what brings them joy. If a girl is interested in fashion or if she's interested in physics, that should be valued because she's valuable. Ever since I was little, everybody in my family could tell I was going to be a scientist. I mean, my friends called me professor. And it was really more a question of what kind of science I might do. What I do now is um, protein engineering. I ended up getting a PhD in molecular biology and biochemistry. But um, when I met my husband, he was a radiologist. And he wanted to become a scientist as well. So we ended up working together in a laboratory that did imaging work. And so now the engineering that I do of proteins is usually to make things imageable. So my job is to try to build light up machines basically that report on biochemical events in breast cancer. We run our lab with a lot of undergraduates in the laboratory. Right now we have six. So a lot of my job is mentoring all day long. I do my own research, but I also assist them. Working with Kathy is awesome. She is so helpful and encourages me to um, first try to solve my problems on my own and then is always there for me when I need it. She's really good at adapting her mentoring style to each individual student. It's really exciting to me because it's never boring. There's always something new to learn and it's such a great environment and it's pretty dynamic and there's a ton of interaction. Research is interesting because you have waves of like, you're really busy with a lot of experiments and then, you know, the next week maybe you're doing your data analysis and um, thinking about like what to do next and planning. It's a little bit like you're trying to take a big epic journey and you need to recruit other people to go along. The goal is long. Everybody has a contribution to make. The heroic part is the courage it comes to take the level of failure, to face that failure every day and put yourself out there and propose something. Without that kind of courage, uh, you won't be curing any diseases. We have some cell issues we're trying to solve. So basically I'm just taking care of the cells right now. We like to split them all 
which means like takes them out of the flask so that they can grow the, throughout the weekend and they don't die from being too overcrowded. Kind of like a pet, they need to be like fed every day and split every day so there are not too many cells in the flask. There's a whole lot of work that needs to be done in just understanding what is the breast cancer? What is it? We don't really always have a clear handle on what makes it even a cancer. I mean, you know, you think that maybe if you have breast cancer, you have one thing, but everybody's breast cancer is different. And the contribution that this type of work makes to that is to try to identify new opportunities for therapeutic targets. That's usually what this type of work is good for. So these are the breast cancer cells, right? Yes. Yeah, and then the ones that are out here, are they the ones that are the patient cells, the normal cells? Um, the stromal cells. cells. Yeah. Yes. We have this two photon microscope which is like a big thing, what I use a lot for a lot of my experiments. And I'm able to look at cells that have different proteins tagged with different fluorescent proteins. That's a model of how the woman's cells in her uh, tumor that are her normal cells interact with her cancer cells and her cancer cells interact with the normal cells and actually they change each other to form a tumor environment. So there's more than one kind of cell in a tumor and those tumors, they speak to the cells around them so much that they actually recruit them for help. And so that's kind of the nature of her project right now is to chase that down. How are the cells communicating with each other? We may not be able to say for sure that the cells are dead, but we will be able to say that they're changed. I really enjoy the, the experiments we've done with changing metabolism with breast cancer cells. So changing their glucose or their other um, nutrients and also then applying chemotherapy drugs to those cells and seeing how your body's environment is gonna affect how those drugs work. It's almost like being able to go to another world. So it's thrilling to see what your eyes can't normally see, to be able to test it, to be able to detect it, to see that it's there. So I think it brings a sense of wonder to people. Without these kinds of positive relationships, you know, the work environment, it would be hard to get up every morning and face that kind of, you know, it's like, okay, we're gonna cure breast cancer. That is a big, big goal. On a day-to-day -day basis, most researchers find that they can't hold that big goal up in front of them every day or they can't face it. Once in a while you pick your head up and you look. You have to reflect back and think, okay, what is my science today going to help with in the future? It's inspiring and it pu definitely pushes me forward every day to be able to tell like my family members or my friends that I'm doing something in cancer research is so cool and it's really worth it. And people care. Kathy is a STEM hero because she is a pioneer in the field. She's really good at adapting. She's one of the smartest people that I know. She is so fun to work with and she has taught me so much, not just about science, but how to be a better person in general. Angela Entosevitz and Jennifer Losinski work all day in chemistry as employees of PVS Knollwood Chemicals. Let's take a look and see just what it is they do. When you're in the STEM field, you can continue to push boundaries. And I think that that's what is really intriguing about the entire field as a whole. Chemistry is literally everything. Like, you are made of chemistry and you know the water you drink is chemistry so it's it's in every industry that you could possibly think of. I am one of those people that will stand in the grocery store and read all of the ingredients on the back of my shampoo. You can't help but notice it in your daily life when you have bulk chemicals in front of you every day. I was always that girl getting dirty, playing with lots of stuff, looking at bugs, all that. So it's kind of been one of those things that Ever since I could go do it, I was in it. PVS Knollwood is based out of Detroit, Michigan. We're a chemical distributor, so the operations that happen have a lot of varied things. We have a lot of shipping and receiving. We'll bring in already packaged materials from different suppliers, and those will get warehoused on the floor so that we're able to ship them to other customers. We have a lot of breaking bulk, so we bring in bulk chemicals in rail cars and tank trucks, 
and that'll get broken down into uh, what we call tote bins or drums or smaller containers that our customers can manage. When I came upon this position, it was an opportunity to be a problem solver. We deal with a very large variety of customers. You talk about a customer who originally started providing chemicals that now when you look back are not approved. They're not safe for humans and, and as regulatory things evolve, you find ways to remove those chemicals out of the environment and place it with safer chemicals. And so one kind of common goal or common question that comes from those types of industries is that, okay, listen, I want to take these chemicals that are now considered unsafe, I want to remove them and I want to bring something safer to not only in an industrial setting, but maybe an institutional setting or right to our tables at home that we're cleaning from. And so you get that opportunity to work with the customers and find the best fit. Every day is different. Whether I am out on the floor working with operators or if I'm working with admin or customers or salespeople, every day presents a different challenge. And that keeps it interesting because you're looking at different aspects of the business that you're in and how it impacts other businesses. PDS Nolan has a very diverse line of chemicals. And so the opportunity to even be a part of working with a diverse line of chemicals is always fun. But it's the most important thing is that it's done safely. There's a team on board that brings in chemicals, puts the chemicals and organizes them together. There's blending going on. There's people working internally on paperwork. There's people working internally on a lab. There's people calling vendors. I mean, it's, it's a full working unit. And when you see everybody working together, the job gets done. It's very rewarding, mainly because you're working as a team. PVS is a very family feel to the organization. And so when you're able to pull different people from their different jobs and help everyone see how their pieces come together in a process to get things out the door and in, you know, hopefully making things more efficient and keeping everyone safe, when they have kind of that wow moment of what the full process is, that's really kind of impactful when you're kind of managing. It's extremely rewarding. And, and honestly, you build relationships and friendships throughout the journey. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in chemistry and in the chemicals that we have here and the service that it is to our customers and to kind of everyone in the community. Adrienne Bennett is the first African-American woman to become a master plumber. She started her own company and takes great pride in pushing boundaries and taking on large projects, like the plumbing inside of Comerica Park, home of the Detroit Tigers. Adrienne took a moment to show us her latest work site in Midtown Detroit. Plumbing, a lot of people don't realize, is not just unplugging a, pl a plug toilet. It's just not when you turn the faucet on or go into a drinking fountain, you get a chance to sip some water. We actually protect the drinking water. That is the number one goal for plumbing, the plumbing industry. I love this industry. As difficult as it is, challenging with the weather, and you're eating dirt, you're eating dust, you know, you, you come out looking like, you know, this dirt ball, but it's the end product. I can stand back, my children can stand back and say, my mom did that. She put the plumbing in that building, and that is the reward of it. Plumbing has such a vast avenue, and I've been blessed with the fact that once I completed a plumbing apprenticeship, I became a plumbing inspector. At that turn, I had to learn and know the code book. You have to understand why the water does what it does, why the, this pitch on the pipe, why the atmosphere affects this and affects that. It all plays into science. And you have to understand the theory of it. And that's why it takes you five years. No, it takes you 20 plus years. I'm still learning. The younger of the Bennetts wanted to know what it's gonna take for us to open up the company. I said, you sure you wanna do this? He says, very much so. He came up with Benkari. It's a combination of two family names, Bennett and Bakari. We are the only woman-owned plumbing company in the state of Michigan. 
not so much as a master plumber, but as a woman, I think the industry as such has been difficult. Uh, it's, it's a male-dominated industry. There's no you know, way about it. So it's been a struggle for her to, to get involved, to get the notoriety that she deserves. So it, from that standpoint, I've noticed probably a more ambitious nature than the guys I'm used to working with. The project that we have today, this is uh, Goodwill Industries. It's going to be a new welcome center. They're in the underground phase. They're putting in the storm, which takes the rainwater from the roof line and conveys it away from the building. The sanitary is what picks up the waste from the toilets, the hand washing sinks, the kitchen sinks, and conveys it away from the building. The underground is required and necessary because without it, the water would just dump on the floor. So this is, this is the part we don't see. This is under the floor. So it's, it, this is gonna be buried in the dirt. They're gonna pour a concrete floor over it. So once it's tested and inspected and approved, it will be covered up, never to be seen again, hopefully. And then you will see the stub ups through the concrete floor. As you elevate in the company, a lot of master plumbers don't do the work anymore. They may be an estimator, or they may just do what I do, they shuffle papers, or they go out and develop the business. A.K. Bennett, he's the project manager. We have Ronald McCullen, he's our senior uh, consulting engineer uh, for the company. We have Alondre Berry, who is our plumbing superintendent slash estimator. After 35 years, they come to me for questions with questions and I answer them the best I can do, they feel I have a lot to offer. Ben Kari is definitely a family and we care about the success of the company. And all of that is fun with growth. Each new job we get, that's fun. That's, a, you know, that's entertainment for us. You know, how big of a job we're gonna get? What new contract are we getting? What are they working on? When we get the blueprints, you know, look at what's on the blueprints. But all that's fun because we're still learning. The most recent award I received it came from within my industry. It was from the National Association of Women in Construction, NAWIC, the Detroit branch, which I'm a member of. And it, it's a, truly an honor for them to have honored me with the Detroit Crystal Vision Award Woman of the Year. It's awesome. I think youngsters in general, women and men alike, they see what she has become and the struggles that she's gone through. And I think she, she lends a, an enthusiasm. She's a great inspiration for anyone who's interested in improving themselves. Thank you so much for joining us for STEM Heroes. I hope we've opened your eyes to just a few of the interesting and unique opportunities that exist within the world of STEM. Share these stories with the young STEMinista in your life and encourage her to explore the path of science, technology, engineering, and math. There are so many exciting and challenging careers and amazing ways to make a difference waiting for all of us in the world of STEM. Thanks for watching. And remember, stay curious. ITC operates, builds, and maintains the electric transmission infrastructure. We are working hard to improve electric reliability and increase electric transmission capacity throughout our operations across the Midwest. ITC, we're your energy superhighway.